Baseball Player of the Week, many accolades. It's Cam Canarella stands in, and the first pitch of the ball game is a strike, and we're underway. And while Wright has had the accolades, Gabby, Cam Canarella is the biggest star on this Clemson team. Oh, he absolutely yes. is. Yeah, I mean, he goes out there and he plays a heck of a center field. He can go get it. But you start to look at the numbers and what he's able to do hitting 337. He could hit the ball out of the ballpark. He's the guy that you want on the top of that lineup. He's down on three pitches as Gage Zeal using the changeup effectively. And that's what you're going to see out of Gabe Zeal. We talked about it. When you look at the numbers in the ERA, he is a strike thrower. He's got that bulldog mentality and does it here. Uses and utilizes that changeup to get Cam Canarella, who's a very good hitter, out in front. They'll bring up Nolan Naraki, the redshirt freshman. He's been in and out of the lineup because of a thumb injury, but has power. Very good hitter. Miles the first one away. The thing about this Clemson lineup, Gabby, is that there is power up and down it. They run well for the most part. It's a really, really complete offense. The 0 1. Tampa foul. It's nothing in two. Yeah, you're right. And the thing is, too, with this Clemson team. You got veteran guys up and down that line of guys who've been there, guys who've done that. And not only that, the belief that they have in each other. They've been down and out basically every single game, and they always find a way to come back and win. So even if you have that lead, you have to watch out because they can, they're can they battle-tested. One and two now the count to Naraki. is the DH. He moved into the two-hole in the second game of their doubleheader Saturday against Florida State. Clemson has been just incredible since three series into the ACC season a year ago. We'll talk more about that as this one goes on. Two and two, the count to Meraki with the slugging Blake Wright waiting on deck. And that's where we review Gage Zeal here. You do not want to put anybody on base because of who you have coming up behind. And Blake Wright, probably the hottest hitter in NCAA. Zeal gets him to chase a pitch out of the zone. Naraki down on strikes and back-to-back -back strikeouts for the junior right-hander to open for Miami. And again, this is what Miami needs out of their number one guy, Gage Zeal. Just throwing some nastiness, but the only reason why he's going to be able to get swings and misses on those pitches is because of strike one, and he's done that with the first two hitters. And now he faces Blake Wright, the hottest hitter in the country, one of the nation's leaders in home runs with 13. Swing and a miss to Wright, 0-1. He's coming off a rough junior season, came back for this year, and you see leading the ACC and runs padded in with 40 already. Fouled out of play, nothing in two. I mean, in a 56 game season, 40 RBI for the year is a pretty good total. <laughs> I mean, that's that's some guy's best years, and there's still so much game left to play. It just goes to show how hot he has been to start this season. Here's the 0 2 outside, and the count one and two now to right. Right at all ACC honors two years ago. Pitch fouled away. He really does battle in these at bats. Zeal's stuff looks pretty good to open. It does. Zeal right now, and the thing is, it's just going in attack mode, and he's able to throw the slider for a strike right now, the fastball for a strike, that changeup just falling right off the table. And he's utilizing all three pitches and throwing all three for strikes makes him tough. It's a pop up here. Torres, the first baseman, fighting the wind, and that one goes out of play. We should mention it is extremely breezy at Mark Light Field. There you get a look at the flags. Uh, 16 mile an hour winds uh, to right. I would say that it's gusting a little bit higher than that. But I got to tell you this, if somebody hits a home run out to left today, that's a, like a 600 foot homer because the way that wind is blowing and I've played in this ballpark. You hit a ball and we just finished seeing it there. Blake Wright flies this one. It looks like it's gonna be in fair territory down that first base line. And it mean it took a 90 feet foul. It just keeps going on you. Swing and a miss. Zeal strikes out the side in the first. 
It's a two-pitch mix, basically. A fastball slider. He does have a changeup, but really, he's making his first start of the season. Uh, he's been coming out of that bullpen. The longest he's gone this year is three innings, so it's going to be interesting to see what Coach Backage does here. Edgardo Villegas leads off for Miami and takes a strike there. It's one and one. Villegas, a consistent on-base man in this Miami lineup in his three seasons with the Hurricanes. Chases that one. It's one and two. And a look at Marshall there sporting the stash. That's a thing that's going on with Clemson this year. <laughs> Little tapper up along first, barehanded by Marshall. He throws the first just in time to get him, and the leadoff man gone in the Miami first. Well, what a good play there by Marshall, being able to just get to that ball. But not only that, you have a base runner that's running right up that line, being able to be able to get it and throw it over Viegas to get the out. Not an easy play. Would you have rather him put the catcher take it there? It's one of those instinct plays, right? Whoever wants to get it is going to go ahead and get it. And the last thing you want to do is call off Marshall because it might be a tough play to be able to get that ball and throw it if you are the catcher. So whoever wants to get it, go ahead and get it. And just you don't want to have that decisiveness in there. You want to just get and go. Here's the sophomore slugger, Blake Sear. Got one and one. Sear, seven homers, slugging over 600 this year, getting on base in a high clip. He was the starting second baseman last year for Miami. And maybe outside of Yo-Yo Morales a year ago, I'm not sure that there was anybody else who had bigger moments offensively for the Hurricanes. Marshall's 2-1. Outside of the count, 3-1 to Sear. comes the 3-1. Tried to check his swing. He held up, and Sear draws a one-out walk, our first base runner of the night. It's now 21 straight games that Sear has reached safely, and here is freshman star Daniel Cuvay. Boy, how good has Cuvay been this season? I mean, for a freshman to come in, and not only that, hitting that three-hole spot, and do the type of damage that he has been able to do this year, hitting 406 with nine home runs. Massive, powerful right-handed hitter, lines it foul and out of play. Nothing at one. You know, I was talking to a national cross-checker this week a little bit about Cuvay. And he said, you know, on the showcase circuit as, an, as a high schooler, he said, I always thought he was going to hit. But really felt like college was what he needed. And, and boy, has he been a welcome addition to this Miami lineup. And that one hit him on the left arm, and now the Hurricanes are threatening two on, one out here in the first. Yeah, that, those are the, the, did I really want him to get hit if you're J.D. or Tiaka? Because I wanted to swing the bat. But another day, get on base, let's get this line moving, especially when you're facing a guy like Marshall who's not used to being a starter, who's come off the, you know, coming out of the bullpen. It, let him throw some pitches to see, especially when you're talking about the first game of the series you want to use as many pitchers as you possibly look like it did I mean from that angle that we had but we don't know we don't know what kind of angles they have well, we're gonna find out here in a second as Gregory Street is gonna alert everybody yep. and they say that he will get first base so Miami has first and second with one out and here comes Dorian Gonzalez jr. and it Coach Belanger going to head out to the mound to visit that they didn't have enough time to rest because of the Thursday game. First pitch is a strike to Gonzalez 0 and 1. And I, I think they that caught was a little the bit of a break with the midweek being canceled. Yes, they absolutely did because they were able to save some pitching for these games. But still, when you look at it, if you have a guy that's usually ready for a seven game rest, it's tough to put him in there early. So with package, he's like, I don't want to just risk somebody maybe getting hurt or coming too early I would rather you know use a couple guys maybe in that first game there's the 1-1 one -one to Gonzalez the cleanup man lines one to left field it'll dump in for a base hit everybody moves up 90 feet and now the Canes have the bases loaded 
for the leading hitter in the ACC, Jason Torres. And if you're Miami, this is who you want up there right now. I mean, we talk about Blake Wright and, and how hot he's been. Well, guess what? Torres is hot, too. He's had his eight home runs. He's hitting 444. And if you're Miami and you're J.D. Arteaga, this is the guy that you want up there with bases loaded, crunch time, to see if he can go ahead and power a ball into the gap somewhere. You've got to be looking at that win to left. If I'm a hitter, I'm not looking to pull anything at this point because my first thought is I look at that, that flag wave and going, I might have a better chance hitting this ball to right center. Not only that, you'll be able to stay on ball and you're just trying to do task at hand, just get something to the outfield. A little over aggressive there as he swings through a heater. It's 0 and 1. Torres is actually tied for third now at the top of the conference, hitting 444, 10th in all of Division I. Charlie Condon at Georgia leads the way in just about every offensive category right now. Pitch. Well located heater. It's nothing in two. Miami with a chance to take control of this game early. Bases loaded in the bottom of the first. No score. Swing and a roller to the right side. There's going to be only one play to first. Purify gets it there in time to get Torres. A run scores, and Miami has a 1 0 lead. Hey, you got to love that about Torres. Not trying to do too much in that situation. Put the ball in play. Good things are going to happen. All he does is just hit it right off the end of the bat. It's a perfectly placed ball. He is out, but he got himself an RBI, and he got Miami a 1 0 lead. It'll bring up Jack Scanlon, the transfer from Oregon. He's been splitting time at catcher this year, left-handed hitter. Right near the New York, New Jersey border. Takes low, it's 1-0. Pitch, and that one rifled to right field and caught. On the run there was Mathis, not as good as what he, it, it, let me try that again. He pitched much better than what the box <laughs> score said in South Bend last weekend. A couple of late runs kind of ruined the line, but he set down 10 in a row at one time, and it's a legit three-pitch mix. There, It's not like he's short on stuff. Uh, no, he's not short on stuff at all, and the thing is, too, remember, he's a bulldog. He does not care. If you got a bat up there, he's going to come right after you. He doesn't care about getting hit. And what he does is he gives you length, especially as that typical Friday night starter. Of course, we're playing on Thursday today. That's what you want out of that starter. That first guy who's going out, you want him to give you as much length as you possibly can. Alden Mathis in the air to deep right field, and this game is tied. Alden Mathis, the transfer from Richmond with a solo home run. And Clemson evens the score at one. Well, we talked about it. Left field, not, not a chance to probably hit a home run today, but that ball will go to right. Boy, Mathis absolutely hammers that pitch by Gage Zeal. Looks to be a changeup just hung up in the zone. Not getting it down, and when you hang it, guys are going to do just that. Hit that ball out of the ballpark. Clemson in the top ten of the nation in home runs. And here's Jimmy Obertop, the transfer from Michigan, as he fouls it away. Here's the thing about Zeal, though, with this. Like, a solo home run isn't going to affect him, and I no. think that's part of what J.D. Arteaga, the, the first-year head coach at Miami, really loves about his junior right-hander, and, and from talking to him is, he is a hyper-competitive dude. And one of the things that stood out in the conversation with JD was, it doesn't necessarily have to be the guy that has the best stuff that has to be your Friday guy. It's the guy who wants to compete that you put in that spot as Obertop goes down on strikes for the first out. And, and that really resonated with me. And I, obviously, you you played at Miami. You understand what it's like to have a Friday guy like that. What does it mean for a team when you have a player that, that understands that you're going up against the best pitchers in the league every week and doesn't get phased by it? 
Well, here's the thing. You, you got to look at this game and Gage Zeal coming in. He knows that he's not going to just go up there and just go through this lineup and give up no runs. It's going to be a oh. tough lineup. What a play. Nice job by Cuvay to stay that, with that one as he bobbled it but planted his feet and made a strong throw. Two outs. Wow, Cuvay. I mean, this is a freshman third baseman. And how he plays this ball, he backs up. He's able to just at least get glove on and then just shows off the arm. Unbalanced, easy throw over to first. Very nice Will, play. Will Taylor, a former wide receiver at Clemson, can really fly. Good play by Cuvay, two outs. And the first pitch hit back through the middle by Jacob Hinderlater. A two-out single for the transfer from Davidson. And second hit of the inning for Clemson. And Mike, getting back to Gage, what we're talking about, he knows that this is a very good lineup. He knows that he's going to give up runs. But he doesn't want to give up those two-run homers or the three-run homers. And he's not a guy that will do that. He's just going to go after every single hitter. And because he's in the strike zone so much, he will give up the hits. He will give up those home runs. But he's also putting the hitters in kind of a swing mode. And that's what's going to get him to be able to throw some pitches maybe off the zone and get some chases. Faces Andrew Shufo here. Jufo transfer from Georgetown, who missed all of last season for the Hoyas because of an injury. He's had one of the biggest blasts of Clemson's season this year, a walk-off home run against rival South Carolina. Count 0-1. Well, to your point about Zeal and, and the way he attacks guys, all eight hitters that he's faced so far, he's gotten ahead with the strike. Pitch. That one just missed. It's one and one. Eight for eight and first pitch strikes isn't easy yeah. to do. <laughs> and that's the thing. You just go on right after guys. You're going to give up hits, but you're making them earn the hits. You're making them go out there and swing the baseball bat. You're making them earn getting on base. He falls behind here, two and one to the number eight hitter in the Clemson lineup. Alden Mathis with a solo home run to lead off this inning, tying the game for the Tigers. 2-1. Swing and miss. That was a really good breaking ball. It's 2-2. Two and, two. and that's what we talked about, right? When you are strike after strike after strike, you're going to be able to expand that zone when you do have a strike. And then especially when you have two, just because you've been throwing a whole bunch of strikes to everybody. It looked like maybe a little pitch com issue there. It's the was like, hey, step off, appearance. just throw. <laughs> yeah, he step yeah. off, just throw to first. I, I mean, I couldn't hear anything that was going on there. Second time in this plate appearance, we've seen that happen where the catcher Scanlon kind of gave that signal. Runner goes, swing and a miss. Inning over. Five strikeouts for sure. It gets more like oh, one man. of those. Animals you see in Times Square, right? It's probably more like <laughs> Cookie Moonster. I don't know. Does he have a cookie? Cakey Monster? You're going to have to check that out. <laughs> Maybe get one of those Mark Light Shakes, the cookie shakes. <laughs> there you go. The legendary Mark Light Shakes. That would foul back. I, I like that. I, it, apparently, uh, Cookie Monster is a longtime Keynes football fan. Josh White the Great. SID at Miami has uh, been helping me out with this today. Uh, <laughs> this past fall, he got famous at Hard Rock Stadium for a sign that said, ACC refs stole my cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Called strike three. And the leadoff man caught. But, I mean, like, the maniac was with him. Like, he's, I mean, he's a popular figure there, so. There he is, making the rounds. Giving cookies out? Good for him. You know, I know you're a South Florida guy, and you do stuff with the Major League team there. Could we see Cookie Monster hanging out with Marlins man behind home plate at some point this year? <laughs> First pitch swinging and a base hit to right field for Jake Kulikowski, the freshman, just his 27th at bat of the season. And it's a one-out single for the D.H., 
And that'll bring up Antonio Jimenez, one of three freshmen in the lineup today. Against Matt Marshall. Get a look at Jimenez. Not much uh, offense from Jimenez so far, just nine for 50, but really, really good arm defensively. And a chance to be a very good player at Miami. Takes it outside, ball one. Yeah, just like what you were just talking about, a problem as a freshman coming in, it's hard to, to have that kind of success, like, let's say, like that Kuve is having early on. You still have to learn the pitches. You have to learn the system. You have to learn what's going out there, how guys are pitching you. Squares the bunt and pulls back. Oh, you count 2-0. Oh. I, I think it's a really good point, Gabby. And really, the defense is going to be Jimenez's calling card early on. Yeah. He's a slick fielder with a really, really electric arm. But it goes, and that one fouled away. It's 2-1. and one. And I think one thing that stands out about him in, in, in talking to the Miami staff is that the game needs to slow down for him a little bit, that, that he has all the tools there. But we hear that a lot as guys move up levels. And, and I'm kind of curious from, from your position, having, having been in that spot, what that means to you when you hear, hey, the game's got to slow down for them a little. Runner goes, pitches a ball, throw down to second in plenty of time. Get Kulikowski two outs. And Kulikowski just not the best of drumps there. It's a very good throw down to second base. Quick release. I mean, that's just an easy one. You got him out by, by a lot. You're going to take off and steal in that kind of situation. Uh, you, you better be able to get yourself a good jump and get yourself to second. Three and two the count. It won the count, excuse me, to Jimenez. Takes high, ball four, a two out walk. I'm going to go back to that, Gabby. When you're trying to yeah. slow the game down, what has to happen? It, but the biggest thing is just kind of as a hitting aspect of it, it's taking pitches just like it did. This walk helps you because you see the pitches, you're letting that ball travel. A lot of times what happens is you get so geared up for a fastball that it doesn't matter what else is being thrown. You're just going up there to swing. And then all of a sudden, you're out in front on those off-speed pitches. It's taking pitches and then realizing this is the same game that you've been playing. Runner goes, and then one Hopperella and Nolan Naraki. Pitch to Purify, fouled away, 0-1. Purify, a true freshman, getting playing time. And pretty regularly at second base. Takes a strike, it's nothing in two. Purify from the Detroit area. There was a huge collection of really good college and professional players that Purify grew up playing with there. 0-2, hit back through the middle. Oh, nice sliding stop by Gonzalez, his throws offline. Purify's gonna head for second. Scanlon's throw, not in time. Well, that was a great play by Gonzalez on that sliding grab to his knee. The thing is, I think he had enough time to get up, set himself, because that ball was hit hard by Purify. Scanlon with a strong throw there to second, too, but Purify in, and Clemson yeah. with a go-ahead run in scoring position. And here is Cam Canarella, struck out swinging his first trip. The star center fielder couldn't hold up. It's 0 and 1. But Mike looked like they're going to give Purify a single and then advancing on the error throw by Gonzalez. Pitch. Little tapper to the right side. It'll move the runner along. Gonzalez to throw on the target that time. And that's the first out. Ian App. Rocky stands in, rolls one to the middle. It'll get the run home. Gonzalez over on the shift, throws him out. And it's 2-1 Clemson. 
at Clemson just playing perfect team baseball. You get on, you get over on the air, and then you go to the top of the lineup. Canarella moves them over to third. You have a guy at third with less than two outs. Get him in. And that's exactly what Clemson was able to do there. Here's Blake Wright. Bounds it away, 0 and 1. Struck out swinging in the first. And surprised that they didn't raise a banner for Gabe Zeal after that because <laughs> as hot as Wright has been, getting him out is one of the biggest feats of the season. Floats that one into center. Moving back as long. He's got it, and the inning is over. A little old school get him over, get him in that last half inning. Yeah, that was uh, it was good baseball. We needed that. Um, you know, that pitcher is the old. He's doesn't doing a good job. I mean, he's a veteran who's been around, and he's uh, he's attacking his own with multiple pitches. So we were fortunate to scratch a run there. Um, you know, get the good hustle by Jaron Purify to take second on the ball that got by, and then yeah, just good baseball. Get him over, get him in. We needed it. Yeah, coach with Marshall on the mound right now, especially after that first inning, how big was it for him to get through that second and still be out there for you right now? Yeah, that was huge. We escaped a big one there in the first. Um, oh, what a play. And short, a little bit of a high throw. Zero reach. Yeah, to, to escape with only a run in that first inning was huge. And we had a, a nice range play by Jaron Purify in the four hole. That saved a run. And then Alden Mathis running catch. That saved two runs. Uh, so the defense helping Matt out. And, the, you know, the best thing he can do is is keep doing that. If they if they hit their way on like that, then fine. But uh, you can't get in trouble with walks and hit by pitches. And we've already had three of those uh, so far in, in two innings. Coach, we appreciate the time. Best of luck tonight. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank Eric you, Coach. Package, the head coach at Clemson, and here's Daniel Cuvay. And the freshman takes low, 1 0. So coach, coach Package there sporting the mustache, the Fu Man shoe that he has. <laughs> <laughs> A little jealous. My dad had that same mustache at one point. Oh, that's great. And now everybody on the team is doing it too. <laughs> this team unity on that Fu Man shoe. <laughs> There you go. You get a good look at Coach Backage's foo. I mean, it's when we <laughs> we saw him yesterday. He was in a full suit and he put on the dark sunglasses and looked like he was getting ready to pull us over. So you miss. <laughs> it's one and two. Uh, just having fun with it, right? I mean, I guess uh, right now, if, if you're Clemson and what they've been able to do a 22 and two start, that's the best start in 24 games since 2002. Uh, you're going to have some fun. Facial hair is going to come out. So you get a miss. You made down on strikes, and that's the first out here in the third. Strikeout number three. Make that number two. Yeah, just a good, good slider working its way down to a very good hitter in Kuvay who swung on top of it. Dorian Gonzalez Jr. Backage in his second year as Clemson's head coach. He came from the University of Michigan. Gonzalez lines that one off the glove of Purify into center field for a base hit. Sear will head to third. Racing to second is Gonzalez, and he's out. Uh, Dorian Gonzalez showing off the hustle. That ball was laced right back up the box. Purify almost makes the play on this one, hitting off of his glove. And because of that, Gonzalez being aggressive, thinking he can make his way over to second. It was close, too. And those are the situations as a coach, a head coach as J.D. Arteaga, you want your guys to be aggressive. If you're going to make a mistake, you want it to be an aggressive mistake. But these are those situations where you kind of look at where the game is. You're playing against Clemson. You have Torres coming up, one of your big boy hitters. Maybe don't risk trying to get yourself into second. Leave that first and third open for your big boy to see if he can hit a three-run homer. Torres, the leading hitter on this team. Takes outside. This is the guy you wanted the plate, though, with two outs to knock in a run. 
Uses the middle of the field well. Chops it foul past third. Yeah, but Mike, what you did too, though, is, is you gave Marshall a chance because now you put first base open, right? So, so you don't have to go ahead and pitch to Torres. If all of a sudden you fall behind 2-0 like he did, you don't have to throw him a strike. Fine, I'll walk you. I'll put you on first base, have first and third, and we go after the next guy. And we count two and two. Now he's in a position where if he executes a breaking ball, he got a chance to get out of this inning and pitch around the leadoff single. Bounce out in front of the plate and the count is full. Clemson two, Miami one, last of the third. Hurricanes with a man at third and two outs. Blake Sear, excellent base runner, gets down the line. And fouled away by Torres. Gabby, he went two strike breaking ball, went back to the fastball there in this spot in an RBI chance. What are you looking for? Yeah, that's the thing. That's what makes this tough because you don't have to pitch to Torres. You have a base open. He misses low and away. I guess it is three and two now. So the first pitch must have been a check swing called a strike in this at bat. So now the count is four. That one line to right. Going over is Mathis, and he'll make another running grab. Larrick Bacic, Bacic highlighted the deep. First season joins us with the Hurricanes down 2-1. J.D., first and foremost, that uh, situation with Dorian Gonzalez, what did you see on the base running play there? Well, we're going to be aggressive on the bases, you know, and, and he had a chance to, to get into scoring position there, and, and the ball was kind of no man's land. So I thought it was a good read. He went hard from home to first, and it took a perfect throw, which their, their guy did, and, and, and got us out there. But we're going to be aggressive on the bases. Uh, J.D., looking at your guy on the mound, Engage Zeal, still has been throwing all first pitch strikes. What do you see out of him today? Well, he's throwing strikes as around the zone, and, and they've come out with a very aggressive approach. So, um, you know, it's kind of what you want out of a pitcher. You know, four swings, and now you got to make quality pitches early in counts. J.D., thank you very much. Best of luck tonight. Thank you. J.D. Arteaga, the first-year head coach at Miami, long-time assistant coach here, played at this program. He has built a staff with a lot of Miami ties. Rob Cooper, the former Penn State head coach, his former teammate for a short time at Miami. Laz Gutierrez joining the staff. Darren Fenster, who is one of the best coaches in professional baseball, this has been really impressive in what JD's done in his first year in building a, I think, one of the more exciting staffs in the country. Oh, absolutely. I know how long JD has been there. Do you know why? Because my freshman <laughs> year was his first year as the pitching coach in Miami. So I've known him for a very, very long time, but he has done a heck of a job of gaining these guys trust, first off, and then gaining a really good staff behind him to be able to kind of get his message across and Laz Gutierrez went to my high school he was actually one of the first ones to go to a division mm. one school out of Rio Miami private so you know all the it's it's a fun world everybody's intertwined swing and a miss Mav is down on strikes that six strikeouts already for Gabe Zeal just to speak to Arteaga as you get a look at the breaking ball again JD is just the fifth coach in the last 62 seasons at Miami. Ron Frazier got the job in 1963. He was there 30 years. Brad Kelly was there a season. Brad now a professional scout with the Kansas City Royals. Kelly was replaced by Jim Morris going into the 1994 season. And Morris held that job for more than 25 years before his longtime assistant Gino Damari took over. Gino leaving somewhat surprisingly at the end of last season, and they kept it in the Miami family. I mean, this is now, what, a 30-year run from the Jim Morris coaching tree that have been in charge for the Hurricanes and Coral Gables. Yeah, and I think that UM did a very good job of letting J.D. Arteaga have his chance to go out there and see what he can do. And I think he's actually done a very nice job. You look at especially the freshmen who have come in, it's not easy recruiting now and able to get these guys to come in and buy in. This is going to be a team that is going to be good as these years go on. 
Two up, two down for Zeal here in the fourth. 2-1 Clemson. And here's Will Taylor. A little look at Zeal. I believe it's now, is it 14 first pitch strikes for just Zeal keeps tonight? Going. Just keeps going. And that's a thing, too, for Clemson. Like J.D. said, they're going to be aggressive. I would be aggressive, too, if I was a hitter right now because if you're just pumping strikes, I'm going to be going. And that's the first time that he does not throw a first pitch strike. But as a hitter, if I saw that you just didn't throw a strike on the first pitch, guess what I'm ready for now? I'm ready for a strike. I'm ready to swing the bat. Liner over the shift and into left field, a base hit. Big turn at first by Taylor, and it's a two-out single. You want to say it was largely predictable that he would throw a pitch <laughs> out of the strike zone there because as soon as I mentioned it, you knew the whammy was coming. Oh, I mean, we've been mentioning it for the past two innings. So, I mean, at some point, he's not going to throw a first pitch strike. But it was still close. It was a pitch that you could have swung at if you wanted to. But, I mean, I kind of take Gabe Zeal, not that he's the same pitcher, but like a Roy Holiday. If Roy Holiday mm -hmm. didn't throw a first pitch strike, he was going to throw a second pitch strike. He was going to at least be one and one. <laughs> and you knew that as a hitter. And guess what? That was going to be the best pitch for you to hit. If you didn't hit it, you were going to probably be walking back to the dugout. Your letter filed that one back. It's 0 and 1. You know, Zeal is not a, a guy with a mid 90s fastball, right? It's 93 is where he's been sitting tonight. It'll touch 95. So it's not like yep. he doesn't have big stuff. But it's not an overwhelming fastball. And yet guys don't seem to put good swings on him very often. May, and now, do you think that's because of the command of his secondaries, or is there something in his delivery that hides that fastball well? There's a good well, breaking I, I, ball. I, and that's what, I, what it is, right? He can throw three pitches for strikes, and he can come after you with three different pitches, and he can throw three different pitches at any time in the count. His fastball does have some good ride on it. It's got good spin rate, so it stays on playing a lot longer. Snap throw to first. Diving back is Taylor. So for me, it's just he's aggressive in the zone. He's got a good fastball with ride, like we talked about. It's 93, 92, could get up to 95 whenever he wants to reach back and really gear up and throw it. And the count now full to Hinderleiter. 2-1 Clemson, top of the fourth. Seal just now at 50 pitches, been very efficient tonight. Taylor with good speed will be on the move here. He goes, swing and a miss. Seven strikeouts for Gage Zeal for Clemson. Uh, and Marshall has looked fantastic on the mound, especially what he's been able to do after that first inning because it looked like he was going to be down and out, looked like Miami had his number, and he's been able to just battle himself back and give Clemson Tigers a chance to give them even more length. And that's what they were looking for today. No one in the dirt. It's one and one. Marshall was a two-time All-Southern Conference pitcher at Wofford. Actually started his collegiate career at Furman in three years at Wofford. That one hit in the air to center. It's not going to carry, though. It's Cantarella's there. Scanlon retired. That's out number one. Or Jacoby Long, first pitch. That one hit in the air to center field. That one will send Cantarella back. And shy of the track, he makes a catch. Right number two. And that's what we talked about with that win. You can see it. It's coming straight in, kind of that crosswind blowing out to right. Anything that you hit to center field, because I'll tell you this, Jacoby Long hit that ball extremely well. And you see, it was still about 10, 15 feet from that fence, and he smacked that ball. So as a hitter, if I see that and I understand that, it's going to be, hey, I need to let that ball travel a little bit more and use that right center field gap. And if you're Marshall on the mound and you're seeing Miami's going up there and they're swinging at the first pitch, continue to be aggressive in the zone. Wilkowski fouls it away. It's 0-2. Marshall, we mentioned, was at Wofford, transferred to Clemson. He beat South Carolina earlier this year. That's something that his dad, Doug, did while he was a pitcher for the Clemson Tigers. 
Doug spent four years there. There you get a look at Doug sporting the mustache just like Matthew. <laughs> that one upstairs. It's one and two. Doug is at the ball game tonight, we understand. And thanks to Brian Hennessy, the great uh, SID at Clemson, for providing us with uh, some photos of Doug back when he pitched for the Tigers. And Matt Marshall is having his best outing as a Tiger this year. Four in. <laughs> Three-legged race wouldn't be too bad. But anything that I got to get in and hop, yeah, that right knee ain't working the way it used to. Is Andrew Shufo, the shortstop for Clemson, leads off at the top of the fifth. Tigers leading Miami 2-1. to one. Gage Zeal continues to work efficiently and ahead in the count. It's nothing in one. It's the first of three this weekend. That one fouled away. I, this is a, a year or a week, excuse me, where most of the teams in the ACC are playing Thursday to su Saturday series. That one hit back through the middle, and it's a leadoff single for the number eight hitter. Because it's Easter Sunday, so most of the teams are playing these series that will start tonight. It's a, usually we get one or two ACC games on Thursday, but the vast majority of teams are in action. It's also the Sweet 16 in the men's basketball tournament tonight, and the Clemson Tigers are playing Arizona, and they have a 39-31 lead over the Wildcats at halftime. Jaron Purify, he bunts. It's a good one to third. Cuvay has it, throws to first in time to get him. A sacrifice moves a man into scoring position with one out. And again, we talked about Clemson and, and what they can do with the bat and the power that they have. Well, guess what? Today, a lot of small ball, move guys over. And, and I think for Eric Backage, the wind Cam plays a lot Cam to that. When you're looking at that, and you're seeing that wind blowing straight in. You go, you know what? Every once in a while, let's win with playing small ball baseball. Get guys over, get guys in. Big spot here for Cam Canarella against Zeal. First pitch to the center fielder is a strike. It's 0-1. Canarella jammed a shoulder on February 20th, diving into a base against Presbyterian, and had been limited to DH for nearly a month. He's now back in center field. He fouls it away. It's nothing to two. He has had a good but not great start to the season, but Canarella is one of the favorites for scouts at the top of next year's draft class, the 2025 class. And outside, it's one and two. And he is right. so good as a center fielder that Will Taylor, who played wide receiver on the Clemson football team, had to move to left to accommodate Canarella. <laughs> it's a fast outfield. And not a lot of stuff is dropping down, that's for sure. One, two. Called strike three. Painted at the bottom of the zone, two outs. That is a huge strikeout from Zeal. Hey, it's a huge strikeout. Not only that, utilizing every single one of his pitches. This one, that slider, just working it down. But one of the things that I've been looking at with Gage Zeal, how many 0-2 counts he's had against an unbelievable hitting Clemson team. 11 0-2 counts so far in this ball game. 0-2. Through 19 hitters, and now here's Nolan Naraki. He is 0 for 2, an RBI ground out his last time that gave Clemson the lead. Tapper foul. Boy, nobody has had good swings. The one good swing was Alden Mathis on a hanging off speed pitch that hit a solo home run to start the second. But otherwise, Zeal has been downright dominant tonight. Rocky chased that one and pops it foul. The wind will not blow that back out of the field <laughs> play. It's 0-2. And again, now 12 guys have come up in 0-2 counts. It's called pounding the zone. Now, he has given up some 0-2 hits because guess what? On 0-2, he's still throwing pitches that are hittable pitches. He's going right after these guys. And if you're Clemson, I understand you're going to go up there and you're going to be aggressive. 
Tried to hold up, he went around. Zeal pumped as he stalks off the mound. And Clemson leaves. And how big he has been. We told you, don't look at the numbers because they are deceiving. Because when he goes out there, he's going basically seven innings almost every single time that he's on that mound. Antonio Jimenez, the number nine hitter, will take a breaking ball down low. It's 1-0, not to be outdone. Matthew Marshall has done a terrific job in this spot start for Clemson. His first start of the year for them, the former two-time All-Southern Conference performer at Wofford, has been in control as well and really kept this Miami offense off kilter. He has not given up an extra base hit tonight. Helped by some heads-up defense. And Jimenez rips it fair past the third baseman into left field. It's a leadoff single for Antonio Jimenez, the number nine hitter. I guarantee you that if you if you talk to Backett, you would say, hey, I will take him going into that fifth inning. As he manages there, absolutely rips a stinger. There's nothing you can do if you're right. By the time he was getting that glove there, that ball was already by him. But if you talk to Backett and said, hey, Marshall's going to go into the fifth inning, would you take that? He would say, in a heartbeat. That means he's throwing strikes and he's out there. Remember, longest that he has gone so far this year was three innings. So him giving as much as he has given so far is very good for Clemson. Right at her Malstead getting loose in the Clemson bullpen. One to Villegas is lined into left field, and that one will get past a sliding Taylor. It's a base hit. Jimenez had to hold up. He'll stop at second. It's first and second. Nobody out for the Canes in the bottom of the fifth. That was almost a really good play by Taylor out left. We talked about how fast they are. The sliding grab just right in front of him, but the big thing that he did was keep that ball in front of him on that slide. Because if that ball gets behind him, oh boy, you have two guys. Over the weekend in the sweep of Florida State, he is another transfer from Wofford. He has been the most used and among the most dependable relievers for Clemson this year. The Tigers yeah. with a 2-1 lead over Miami as they get ready to face the heart of the Hurricanes lineup. Yeah, there's no reason at all where Eric Backage was looking at this, this situation and saying, I know who I'm going to. I'm going to go with my tough guy out of the bullpen, sidewinder, unorthodox, to see if I can try to get myself a ground ball. See if I can roll a pair and get two outs on the board. Blake Sear, the man with the nickname Hollywood because he loves the bright lights, Coming up in the biggest spot of this game, a pickoff throw to second, and they hung the freshman out to dry. A huge first out. Wow, how about that? First play that you're going to call. I mean, what a move. That ball, that front foot comes down. It looked like it came down right before the mound. I don't know where it was, but gets away with it, gets out at second base, just a tough, Tough read if you're the base runner. A great job there by Malstad and a great call by Clemson to try that move to see if you could steal an out, and they were able to. Miami's lost a couple of runners on the base paths tonight. The freshman Jimenez picked off in that spot. Now Overstop with a good stop behind the plate, and Sear pops it up. Shallow right, racing over is Purify, and he overruns it. It'll fall foul. Mathis an effort too. Gabby, you talked about that at the outset, though. Wind really playing tricks on that one tonight. It's hard, right? Because you, as an infielder, you know where you're going. You know kind of where that ball should be. But you also have seen that flag as he slips on that outfield dirt area, the warning track. It's not easy because you're looking at the ball, but that ball is kind of doing tricks on you with that wind. He gets over there, just overruns it just a little bit. Not an easy play, but it gives another opportunity for Sear here. Seven home runs on the season for the left fielder. Miami down a run. And now Sear ahead in the count.
here in the air. Center field, it's Canarella who's under it and makes the catch for out number two. And it'll be up to the freshman, Daniel Cuvay. Well, there's a reason why they brought this man in, right? Get to, uh, we got we got man on first and second with nobody out. We need somebody to come in and get some big outs. Mostad so far has been up to the task. First pitch to Cuvay, the freshman takes a strike, going one. Cuvay hit by a pitch and struck out in his two plate appearances so far tonight. The pitch. Beast foul. It's nothing and two. Daniel Cuvay with the power to turn this game around. Nine home runs for the freshman. One of the top freshman home run hitters in the country. He swings and hits that one to short. Glove by Chufo. Tossed to second and the inning is over. What a shot of the Clemson order here, starting with the red hot Blake Wright. First pitch is ripped foul past third. Wright, who came in with 10 home runs in his last dozen games. 0 for 2 tonight. And when misses, it's one and one. Alden Mathis, Jimmy Obertop, the other scheduled hitters for Clemson in this sixth inning. Tried to hold up. He went around. It's one and two. Boy, guys are just not able to pick the ball up against Zeal. He has been dynamite. It's not only that. It's that since he's throwing so many strikes, like I said, if you're filling up that strike zone early, that third time through, you're ready to swing. And that's exactly what we saw out of right. First pitch, I'm ready. I'm going to go because I know that I'm going to probably get a good pitch to hit in that first one. If I fall behind, I'm going to have to worry about that slider that he can throw for a strike. I'm going to have to worry about that changeup that's going to work down in the zone. So I need to be ready to hit on pitch number one. Two two. Fouled away. I mean, we're talking. <laughs> Nearly 80% strikes tonight for Zeal. That, that's a lot. It, sometimes you wonder yeah. about it being too, too many. many, but he has been <laughs> out of the middle of the plate all night with maybe one exception. The change of the math is hit out. That one hung up a little bit. And Wright just did get a piece. And, and you're right. You're going to give up one or two pitches per game that you probably hang. And every once in a while, you'll get away with those where guys are going to just miss it, hit underneath. And you're going to have games where, hey, guys got it and they tattooed it. But to me, for Zio, it's just been that bulldog mentality going after one of the better hitting teams in all of college baseball. Called strike three, a backup breaking ball, and that's 10 strikeouts for Gabe Zio. Hey, you're right about that for a second there. I thought it was a changeup. And it, I think it was. I think it was a changeup, but that ball moved a good two feet. That's the best changeup that he has thrown today. The action on that one went from one side of the plate to a right of the outside and worked its way all the way back in. Ten strikeouts, a season high for Zeal. Now he faces Alden Mathis, who clipped him for a solo homer to start the second. And he falls behind him 1 and 0. Loved easily by Torres to on the call for that game from Winston Salem. That is going to be a very exciting series between North Carolina and Wake Forest. Wake Forest making the decision to move Chase Burns, who they might as well just name the ACC Pitcher of the Week award after at this point. To Fridays. So Josh Hartle will face Jason DeCaro, the 17 year old freshman for North Carolina. Wow. I tell you what, every single ACC game seems to just be unbelievable, right? Like we've, we've called a lot of games so far, every single one, a lot of talent in the ACC. Two out single for Jimmy Obertop. 
in the Clemson sixth, leading two to one. I'll bring up Will Taylor at a base hit his last trip. It is a really good conference this year. I mean, the ACC is always a good conference, right? Yeah. It's, this is not, that's a, one of those, hey, Dick Tracy, where'd you park the cop car moments, right? <laughs> like, we get it. But well, th this was Mike, said to me this morning. It's, I think it's what, seven ACC teams inside the, in top, the top 25 in yep. the RPI. Yeah. It, it, here's the thing, too. Last year, you saw it coming. Last year, there was a lot of talent in the ACC, and I said it last year, these guys are just beating up on one another, and they can play against anybody, and they can do some damage. This year, it's even better because the freshman class that has come in is nasty. There's a lot of really good freshman class. So you put the good freshman class along with the players that were there last year, boy, this ACC team, I mean, that's the reason why seven of the top 25 teams are from the ACC. Taylor skies that one down the right field line, and it'll get out of play. Uh, even in this game, we have three true freshmen in the Miami lineup, a true freshman in the Clemson lineup, and a redshirt freshman. So you're right, the talent level is there. I did a lot of SEC games last year, and it was a very good year for the SEC. We know the SEC is yeah. a very strong conference. The ACC this year is as good as any league I think we've seen the last several Wing and a foul the plate. Taylor stays alive. I just, I'm with you. I think the freshman class has really elevated, I don't want to say the bottom of the league, but it has made these rosters so much deeper. And boy, it's a really good collection of juniors. And we haven't even seen, you know, some of the best players in the conference get going. You know, Nick Kurtz was out with an injury and really struggled early for Wake Forest. Josh Hartle has struggled for them. Those are guys who were viewed as first-rounders. Kate Zeal pitches in. And the first pitch popped up into shallow right. Purify will give way to Mathis, who's almost to the infield when he makes the catch to retire Dorian Gonzalez Jr. one out. Uh, those are the ones when they go up, if you're an infielder, you just look at your outfield going, no, I am done trying to chase out that ball. That's not easy. This wind is swirling around. This is all you. Coming in is a lot easier than going out and trying to make the play. Jason Torres hit second on the team in home runs. He is 0 for 2. A ground out RBI in the first inning and a nice play by Jaron Purify. And then line to right to end the third with a man on. Takes low, 1-0. So I was talking to J.D. Arteaga about Torres this week. And he dropped one of my favorite baseball cliches. Hitters are going to hit, which is, <laughs> I remember the great, the late great Don Baylor talking about that. But, I mean, to me, that just means that it doesn't always have to look beautiful for Jason Torres. This is just a guy who knows how to get the bat to the ball. Uh, that's a pitcher's mentality, right? Hey, hitters are going to hit. Man, that's what you hear out of the pitchers. I can't, I'm not going to be perfect, you know? Uh, but you're right. You make a mistake, especially make a mistake to a big boy like Torres, and he makes you pay. You, you never, as a hitter, hit the pitcher's best pitch. Every once in a while, you will. But more likely than not, when the pitcher makes his perfect executed pitch, you're not going to get a hit on that one. It's the mistake pitches that you hit. Boy, what a good job there by Torres, staying on that baseball and driving it to center field. Not an easy pitch to do against Malstead, who that pitch is just coming in on the hands. But wow, how he's able to get those hands inside of his body and drive it out to center field. And for Miami, that's what you need to do to try to get yourself back in this ball game. Down two to one against Clemson. And right now, Clemson pitching has just been outstanding. They've been doing just the same as Gage Z on the other side, throwing a lot of first pitch strikes and making the hitters work. 
Scanlon stands in 0 for 2 on the night, but hitting 308 on the season with four home runs. And for Scanlon, lefty versus righty, this is what you want if you're JTR Tiaga because you do not want to face righty versus righty against Marston. You want to go up there and you want to have that lefty. It's a lot easier to hit. And you can see there Malstead throwing that sinker away from the lefty. It's a one two count for Scanlon. Tor is at first, not a real big threat to steal. But J.D. Artiaga talked about we're going to be aggressive on, <laughs> aggressive on the base pass. So if your Torres at first, what you're looking for is something down in the ground, something where if Oberton has to block, you got to get yourself going to second. What a big time pitch by Marstead. Slider down in the zone for strike three. That's two outs in the inning. And boy, this pitch is just so tough. Out of the hands, it looks like it's gonna be way down in the zone. As a hitter, you kind of give up and that ball just stayed up enough for strike three call. Kobe Long swings at the first pitch. Chufo to purify. You don't see out of this Clemson team because this is a very good hitting ball club. But if you're looking at Zeal, he needs to keep Miami in this ball game if they want a chance to come back. And again, just pumping another first pitch strike. We have seen it all game. We have talked about it. Probably to nausea, and I understand it is just very impressive when a guy gets on the mound and is just a bulldog. This ball gets hit right in front of Scanlon. Very nice play to be able to get out there, clear himself away from the base run, and make a strong throw over to Torres. And again, just throwing a lot of strikes. Look at Scanlon get out there, attack the zone, get himself free, and make a strong throw over to first. And if you're Gabe Zeal, guess what? You want that. You want quick and early outs. 81 pitches, one out into this seventh inning. Gabe Zeal back to work. And the first pitch misses high. 1 0 to Andrew Schufo. Schufo, a single his last trip, one for two. This is an extremely well pitched ball game tonight. But now, Zeal falling behind 2 0. We have not seen that very often tonight. Just the second time tonight that he's fallen behind 2 0 on a hitter. Oh, and fouled away. It's 2 1. I don't know that we have even made a big enough deal about the top leverage cabbie. I mean, he has just been magnificent in the way he has attacked hitters. It has. And we've been talking about it, and I understand. But when you have a pitcher like Gage Zeal going up against a team who probably is the hottest in baseball right now in college, just attacking the zone right away from the first pitch, going right after these hitters, and basically not letting them do much, impressive. Oh, a lace to left, but coming in, making the diving attempt and not being able to get it is Ciro. Get by him to the warning track. Hustling on his way to third is Chufo, and he's in with a head first slide and a triple. Boy, Chufo showing off the speed. Tough play by Blake Sear. Try to come in and make the big play. Now remember, too. Sear is not used to playing left field. He is just basically getting out there and starting to play. So there's going to be moments in time, especially with the wind blowing in, where he's going to learn how to read those balls. On that one, try to be aggressive to make the play, understanding that ball. See the infield in at all four spots. The speedy purify 
waits. The first pitch. Breaking ball strike, 0 and 1. And if you're purifying in this situation, you know that you're going to get a bunch of strikes because Zio's shown that the whole entire game. You got to look for something up. He squares the bunt. He gets a down foul on the suicide squeeze attempt. And the count is nothing in two. Listen, that's not a bad play at all by Eric Backage. And the reason why is because he was throwing so many strikes. You know, in that situation, he's been getting 0-2 a lot. This is a suicide squeeze. He's coming in. That's not a safety squeeze. That's not, hey, ball's getting down. No, that ball's in the air. You're running, and you're just saying, hey, you got to get that ball down. Infield still in with two strikes, and purified out on strikes for out number two. Wow, what a big out by Cage Zeal. Slider down and away. Again, 0-2 count. But that ball starts right on that outside corner and breaks off. You're throwing a lot of strikes. You're going to get those swings and misses off the plate. The statistician Kevin Maloney tells us 12 strikeouts tonight for Gage Zeal. A career high. And now to the top of the order in Canarella. On the ground to second. He's going to get out of it without allowing a run. Man at third one. Miami this season, can they start a rally here? Kulikowski, the freshman, takes low. It's 1-0. Kulikowski, Jimenez, Villegas, the scheduled hitters, 8-9-1 for the Hurricanes. There's a strike. It's 1-1. One one. If you're just joining us, Miami had a 1-0 lead after one. Alden Mathis, a solo home run for Clemson. The lead off the second tied the game. And then Clemson took the lead in part because of a throwing error by Dorian Gonzalez Jr. on an infield single from Jaron Purify. A couple of ground outs later, the Tigers had the advantage. And really since then, Gabby, the best opportunity that Miami had was first and second, nobody out in the fifth. And that was when Malstead came in and picked off the lead runner, Antonio Jimenez, for the first out. He's a little dribbler and another nice play by Overtop, one out. The shortstop, Antonio That was a very nice play by Overtop to be able to just get out there. Not an easy play because your momentum is going forward up that line if you're a catcher. You've got all the gear on. You've got your mask on. He doesn't take it off. But again, unbalanced throw and is able to make a strike over to first. Here's Jimenez. Singled his last trip. Behind of the count, nothing and one. That is big physical shortstop. Takes outside. It's one and Menez has a really good appreciation for the history of baseball. I spent some time with him the summer before his senior year. He was at a showcase event at Fenway Park and standing around the batting cage for the game, Gabby, and he looks at me and goes, Man, you can just feel the energy and spirits in this place. <laughs> the place was empty, but you could tell he loved every minute of it. He hits it on the ground to short. Nice play by Shufo. Throw on the two outs for Villegas. Squares and takes a strike. It's 0 1. Ricardo Villegas, 1 for 3 tonight. Right field this evening, and he's behind on the count, 0 and 2. Yeah, he's a key on baseman in this Miami lineup. The pitch, Tapper towards the middle, gloved by Chufo, throws to first in time to get him. A couple of nifty plays by the Clemson shortstop, and Miami goes in in the ACC. Eric Backage's first year there. There's a butt attempt up along third, and Cuvea let it roll foul. Since that time, Clemson has not lost a series. In fact, in their last 56 games, Gabby, that's a full season of college baseball. The Tigers are 49 and 7. 
Uh, yeah, they've just been outstanding. I think we talked about that early on uh, last season, the first three series that they lost, and it, it looked like, oh boy, what's happened with this Clemson team? And then Eric Backage all of a sudden just got that team together and something just clicked in them. And boy, they have been hard to beat ever since. And they brought that from last year into this season. And you look where they are in the standing, number three in the country, and just continue to do it. And they're doing it a different way tonight. It's been with great defense and really good pitching. This powerful offense has been held in check. But this is the big inning for both teams. The heart of the order for Clemson here in the top of the eighth and the heart of the order due for Miami in the bottom half. And Gage Zeal still working. And now 13 strikeouts for the right-hander, one out. Yeah, there's not much more that we can say about Gage Zeal other than he is just feeling it tonight. 93 miles an hour painted on that outside corner. And if you think that he can't go all the way, the way he's throwing tonight, I don't see why not. He's at 93 pitches at this point. The most he has thrown so far this season is 102. He did that March 1st against Florida. But he's been pitching a lot more. So I don't know if you're J.D. Arteaga, if you can say that I can take this man out because he continues to throw strikes. And not only that, velocity is still in that low to mid-90s. His career high in pitches thrown is 110, but he's working through the heart of the Clemson order here with a one-run lead, and he's ahead of Blake Wright, 0-2. This has been quite a show from the junior right-hander tonight. Cool, calm, collected the entire evening. A miss, it's 1-2. and two. No walks. Two two ball counts. <laughs> the go ahead run scoring in the fourth. Unearned. Seals one two. Popped up. Shallow right. This will be trouble in the wind. Racing over is Torres and a nice play by the first baseman. Two outs. There's a little fist pump from our first baseman, Gabby Sanchez, on that one. Uh, it's not an easy play, and we've been talking about the flag, and guess what? That flag is still flying hard to that right field, and you can see Torres kind of just smirking a little bit, looking at Viegas going, dude, you got to help me out on this one. This is not an easy play, but he stayed with it and was able to make the play. Very nice job by Torres at first. Two outs, nobody on. Clemson up 2-1. to one. Here's Alden Mathis. A solo home run his first trip as he takes a strike. Mathis, the transfer from Richmond. Half a dozen home runs this season. And he's behind 0-2. This next pitch of the night will be the 100th for Gage Zeal. The junior right-hander. With the crowd getting behind him. 14 strikeouts for Gage Zeal. Fired up coming off the mound. He's held Clemson to two runs through eight. Now can the Miami offense answer? He's pitching tonight as well, Gabby. Yeah. They have been really, really good. Matthew Marshall in a spot start and now Lucas Malstead. First pitch popped up, foul territory, first base side, not a play. Yeah, we've talked a lot about Gage Z and the performance that he has had today. But when you look at Marshall and you look at Morstead coming out and doing what they've been able to do against this Miami lineup, because guess what? This Miami lineup, they can score runs. And they've been scoring a lot of runs this whole entire season. And just keeping them at bay to only that one run shows how good they have been so far today. Morstead had Sear way out in front. It's nothing in two. Sear... Cuve and Gonzalez to hit. Two, three, and four in the Miami order. On the ground to short. Shufo bobbles. Hustles the first just in time to get him. Leadoff man gone in the Miami eighth. That's now six in a row set down by Malston. He's allowed just one hit in his three and a third innings out of the pen. 
I mean, it's just he's a tough guy, right? Because you're not used to seeing that as a hitter. You're used to seeing from over the top. You're not used to seeing from down below. A lot more action, a lot more run coming in on the hands. And it's not an overpowering fastball. But it's just so unorthodox that as a hitter, it takes you that extra second to look to see is it going to be a striker ball. Cuvay lines that one past the diving. Chufo into left field. A one-out single, and the freshman gets his first hit of the night. So the tying run is aboard, and here comes Dorian Gonzalez, Jr. And that's what you have to do against a sidewinder who's coming down from below. I usually am the one to say, hey, stay back. Drive that ball to the middle of the field. But against a guy who that ball is going to be running in, you basically say, I'm going to swing at a fastball, or I'm going to swing at the slider. You've got to pick one or the other. You can't swing at both. Here's Gonzalez, and he fouls it away off to the left and out of play. Now, he's not your traditional cleanup hitter as Dorian Gonzalez, Jr. He does have four home runs on the season. But a guy that will go more gap to gap. Cuvay, the freshman with the lead at first. Pitch. On the ground to the right side, gloved at first, throw to second, in time to get him a 3-6 double play. And the as it confirms the call, or at least it stands. ACC umpire's not mic'd up, so we will stay here. The inning is over officially. And we head to the ninth, and Gage Zeal's going to go back to work. Yeah, when you look at those plays, I mean, we know like that Clemson has right now and has only really given up one Earn run. The other run was not earned against him in that third inning. First pitch to Obertop is hit in the air to right, going back. Villegas in foul ground leaps up over the fence, but can't make the catch. It's 0 and 1. Long, loud foul ball. But the wind pushing that one out of play and Zeal, a deep breath. So it's just a long strike. Well, that's the thing, right? If you're Clemson, you got to continue to stay aggressive because he has just been consistently throwing strikes in the zone. So what Obertop did there, I think is very smart. I'm going to go up there. If he throws me a good fastball that I'm looking for, I'm going to go ahead and react to it, and I'm going to try to hit that ball on the barrel. So a double barrel action in the Miami pen. It's Nick Robert, the freshman right-hander, and the senior righty Ben Chestnut both getting loose. There you see them, just in case. But Zeal ahead of another hitter, 0-2. That fastball misses high, it's 1-2. Overtop singled his last trip. Getting into the bottom part of the order here for Zeal. 1-2. Foul back. Getting a, a season high in pitches for Zeal. But very, very sharp tonight. Here comes the one two. On the ground to short. Jimenez has it. Throws to first in time to get the catcher. One out. Here's Will Taylor. Eight and a third innings. That's a career high in innings for the junior right-hander Zeal. Now face the speedy Taylor is one for three. Look at Taylor's average, Gabby, only 224, but the on-base percentage has been near 500. That one butted foul. It's 0-1. Yeah, I mean, there's there's just nothing to say either other than he's just had some bad luck. You know, talking uh, with Eric Backage, he told us, you know, for Will Taylor, you, you look at what he has done this year, don't look at the average. He has hit the ball extremely hard. Just been a lot of atom balls, just smoking balls right at people. And as a hitter, it's it's really tough to take that in especially for a young guy, because it's like, man, I'm not doing my job, but you are. Your job is to hit the ball hard. You're doing that. And if you stay with that same mentality as I'm going to go out there and swing the bat hard, good things are eventually going to happen. 
Two and one the count to Taylor. Two and two. This next pitch will match the career high in pitches thrown in a game from Zeal. He is getting into uncharted territory. Oh, and fouled away. Man, that's a good job by Taylor to stay alive on that slider down and away. We've seen countless hitters today swing over the top of that pitch. And for Taylor, and it's what you talk about, right? Just putting barrel to baseball was able to do it there just to foul that pitch off. Just high, and the count is full. Seal has not walked a man tonight. 14 strikeouts through eight and a third. Facing Will Taylor down a run. The pitch. On the ground, the second baseman Gonzalez in the shift. Throws to first. Two outs to go. 66-61. And to go to the Elite Eight. A swing and a miss. By Hinderleiter. It's 0-1. Hinderleiter starting that double play that ended the bottom of the eighth. Upstairs, it's one and one. Looking ahead to the Miami ninth, Jason Torres, their leading hitter, will lead off, followed by Jack Scanlon and Jacoby Long. Those are the scheduled matters. And now Zeal ahead, one and two. Another two strike count for the right hander. The Hurricane crowd, supportive of the junior ace. The pitch, the liner foul, first base side. I'm surprised he didn't go back to that slider again, to hinder ladder. He had just finished throwing the hinder ladder, had fouled it straight back. Usually a pitcher will go up there, especially with the field that Zeal has today, and just throw it a little bit more away. Just off the plate, Zeal thought he had it. It's two and two. And that's the pitch that I was talking about where I thought he should have gone back to this one. Boy, that's a good pitch. A little bit off the play, but that's exactly where he wanted to throw it. Swing and a miss. Torres at some point. Torres, one for three. He knocked in Miami's run with an RBI ground out in the first. He singled and lined to right. Hughes set. First pitch to Torres. On its way. Upstairs, 1 0. Torres, eight home runs this season, second on the team. Only the freshman, Daniel Cuvet, with more. Outfield very deep. Foul back. Ooh, he had a good cut there, Gabby. Well, he definitely did, and that's what he's looking for, an elevated fastball, something up in the zone, because that's what Hughes likes to do. He likes to elevate that fastball up in the zone to then make you chase that slider down and away. One, one. Called strike. It's one and two to Torres. Miami has not had an extra base hit tonight. Hughes rarely allows them. The one two. Way high. Two and two. Look like that one slipped out of his hand. Yeah, that, that's what Miami weather would do to you. Get a little sweat going in the hands, make it a little bit slippery. And we talk about Hughes and that fastball. Uses it a bunch. Uses it about 69% of the time. Torres fouls it away. Scanlon in the on deck circle, the left handed hitter waiting. Torres trying to get a rally started. You get a look at the Miami bench, all leaning on the rail in this one run game in the ninth. 2 2. Way high and outside, and the count is full to Torres. Well, if you're Torres here, you're looking for one pitch and one pitch alone, looking and sitting dead red on that fastball.
Hughes, 3-2 coming. Ball four outside, and Miami has the tying run aboard. What an at-bat by Torres. Takes a pitch that's down and away. Obertop tries to pull it back to be a strike. Doesn't get the call. And looks like Miami is going to get a pinch runner into this ball game. That'll be A.J. Goitia, the freshman. Goitia from Wesley Chapel, Florida, and Mont Verde Academy. So the tying run at first, and here's Scanlon, the left-handed hitting catcher. And good at bats tonight. First pitch. The inside, it gets away, and the tying run will move to scoring position. Yeah, this ball just gets right by over top. As it's going, it almost looks like it's going to hit the back foot of Scanlon as it gets away. We, we talk about Clemson Tigers and what they've been able to do in comeback victories. Miami is right there, and there is a lot of magic here at the light, and Miami has done it a bunch this year with 10 come from behind victories. And now Scanlon ahead 2-0. Clemson with just one conference loss so far on the year. The pitch. Foul back. Ooh, he had a pitch to hit. Maybe got in on him just a little. Yeah, but I don't mind that if you're Miami and you're Scanlon. I, I'm at 2-0. I'm looking. I know I'm going to get a fastball. I'm looking to do some damage. But now in this situation, I'm looking to get the job done. I need to get that runner over to third. I'm looking for something that I could pull hard to that right side. Swing and a miss. Two and two the count. Now it's just about putting the ball in play. And if you're Hughes, you're trying to keep him away from that. You may even be able to expand the zone more in. Foul away. Scanlon a little tardy on the fastball. Hughes has got a good heater, it looks like. It's a little bit of a funky arm slot, too. That's got to make it difficult for hitters to pick up. It, it is. It's almost like a herky-jerky arm action, and it's coming in firm right now. It, it looks like a forcing fastball, but again, we talk about analytics, and we talk about spin rate, and there's a lot in Hughes' arm. The 2-2. Scanlon to deep right field. Way back. Miami wins. Jack Scanlon about to be mobbed by his...